Hey everyone, what's up? Today we're looking at how to create a remappable key mapping using the new enhanced input system. Let's get started with a quick preview. So here you can see I press the spacebar. Now I can change it to H in my key mapping settings, go back to the game and press spacebar again. Nothing happens. Now I press H and the character jumps. Also, this persists across multiple playing sessions, meaning it will be saved. So let's dive right in. I've set up a first-person shooter template running the Unreal Engine 5.3. The first thing we want to do is check our project settings. Head over to project settings, navigate to the enhanced input tab and under the user settings, enable user settings experimental. Next, we go to the content browser, select first person, go to input and find the actions. Inside here, we'll create a new input action. Let's call it input action open mapping, for example. Open it up and inside here, we need two triggers, the press trigger and the release trigger. Save it and go back to the content folder. Now we need to access the IMC. We have IMC default and IMC weapons, so choose this time IMC default. Inside here, press add and select the open mapping. Press on the small button here and then you can press any key on your keyboard to get it fast selected. After you've done this, open the first person player. Inside here, get the enhanced input user settings. Check if the mapping contexts are registered, then check IMC default here and create a branch. If it's not connected, we want to register a custom input mapping context. This maps all the necessary keys to the character. Next, let's create our widget. In the content folder, create a new folder named widgets. Inside here, create a widget blueprint. Let's call it WB settings. Open it up and place a canvas panel inside. Add a vertical box and a small text to label it as settings. Next, let's work on opening this widget inside the game. Head back to the first person blueprint. Inside here, get open mapping. Since we have a trigger with press and release, we want to get from the completed. Then check if it's valid here or the not a valid path, create the widget and store it as a variable. Then let's plug this inside the is valid. From the widget, search for add viewport. Get the player controller, set the input mode, game and UI, and hide cursor during capture is false. Then get from the get player controller, the set show mouse cursor. From the is valid, get a branch and pull in the VB settings reference. From there, get the is visible and connected with the new created branch. If the WB settings ref is not visible connected to the add viewport, if it's already visible, we remove it from the parent. Set the input mode to game only and set show the mouse cursor to true. Now let's test it out. Press play and press Q and you can see the settings. We are ready to work now on the actual widget. We will need a scroll box inside here and then set this as a variable. Go back to the graph and remove those. From the event construct, we want to clear the children of the scroll box. Then inside here, get the enhanced input local player subsystem. From that one, we get the enhanced input user settings. and we promote it to a variable called user settings. Check 
if it's valid. And then we get the current profile, which represents the player's current key mappings. Access in the player mappings and extract them. From the values, we make a for each loop. Inside here, break the key mapping rows and promote them to an array. What we're doing here is we're going to all the mapping rows from the player. Then from the two array, we want to have for each loop with break. Break the player key mapping row. And as you can see, we have here all our settings. Then from the slot, we want to check if it's equal to the first slot. This makes things easier for us when we only work with the first slot. So when we found the first slot, we promote it to a variable and we break from here. Then from the completed, we create a new widget. Let's create this widget. I'm calling it WB key slot. Here, create a horizontal box, put inside a text block, an input key a selector and a reset button. Now let's configure the dimensions. You can put them all to fill. Let's remove those ugly old orders and change the font color of the input key selector to white. And maybe you can adjust the opacity if you like it. Then go to the graph and create a new variable. I name this key map. The type is gonna be the player key map. Inside here, get the key map and break the key map. Now let's create a update function, get the input key selector and set the selected key. Then break the selected key and then connect the key from the input cord to the update. Pull the update function and set the current key to the key and connect the event construct to the update. Let's get back into the settings and select our key slot. Now we should see the key slot. Then get the scroll box and add the child to the scroll box. But I forgot to expose the key map. So go back to the key slot and click on the key map and instance editable and expose on spawn. Compile and save and return to the settings to refresh the node. Plug the font map into the key map. Another very important element is the user settings. So go ahead, create a variable for the user setting and select the enhanced input user setting as the type. And here again, set it as instance editable and expose on spawn. Compile, save and refresh the node. Before this can work, we need to set something inside our input action. So go ahead and click on the input action. What we need to do for all of our mappings is to set the player mappable key settings. Like here, select a name and a display name. Go back to the WB settings, make it a bit bigger and press play. Press the Q button and now you can see we have here our jump. Only because we enabled the player mappable key setting. Now let's do it for all of the other input actions. There's one exception. For the move where we have more than one key, we need to override it inside the IMC. So go inside here, click on the W for example, and here we click override the player key mappable settings. So now I will do it here fast so you can see what I'm doing, but uh, we don't waste too much time. Next, 
Next, we need to do the logic for the key slot. Go to the key selector and click on the key selected and on the is selecting key changed. From the on is selection key changed, we want to have a is selection change variable. So create this Boolean. So this helps us to only run when the user changed from the key selector and not when we changed it from the code. From the on key selected, get a branch and connect the is selection changed. Then get the selected key. Break the selected key here and set the is selection back to false. From the input cord, get the key and promote it to a variable like new key. Connect them both and then get the user setting. From the user setting, we want to find the map player key. Expand it and get the key map. Break the key map and connect the mapping names together. And then as the new key, we want to put in the new key. From the user settings, get the apply settings and the save settings. Now we can test it. Press play and try to change here some keys. And as you can see, it should work now. So the core system is working. The next few things are only cosmetic things. First, we want to have the text block, which should be the key map here. And then display name. Let's get the reset button to work. Go to the reset button, click on the on clicked event. Here we want to do the same as before, so copy and paste. Instead of the new key, we want to use the default key. So yeah, we're resetting to the default key from this key map. At the end, we want to update our key selector. Let's test it again. Press Q and see as we have now our input text and our reset which is working click here somewhere on the reset where you changed it before and it's working quite good test for example the spacebar with the letter h or something like this and try to press it and as you can see it works the one thing about the system to mention is that it automatically creates a save game for you so if you're testing something and you want to delete or go back to the default, just go inside this folder and delete the file. And the next thing is I want to mention that we have no checking in place that prevents the user from using key multiple times. This is something I consider to add in a future tutorial. But for now, I think this is everything I wanted to show. And that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to join our Discord server. See you in the next one. Bye.